Hello on YouTube. So today I wanted to do my best picks against the spread heading into week excuse me, week 12. So this video is coming a little bit late. I tend to do this video at the end of the week each week. Uh, try for the last couple of weeks to um, you know do a little bit ahead of time. But uh, nevertheless, I do have my five best, uh, actually four best picks against the spread, and then one of them's an over uh, an over under. Mm -hmm. I do this occasionally. But, yeah, so, um, go ahead and start with my first line, which is Michigan State, Ohio State. So the line is Ohio State by 14, and I just don't get that line. Um, you know, if I was Vegas odds makers, I'd put it may maybe max Ohio State by 10. I get it. Michigan State has not played great of late. They've been playing close to a lot of teams. They did get beat by Nebraska. But, I mean, look back at their games. Like, there's been, obviously there's been no game where they got just, dis or got just dismantled. They've beaten some good teams. I mean, Oregon's looking good now. Uh, Michigan, obviously. So, like I said, I don't really get why the line so why the line is the way it is. I get it that Jared or JT Barrett's playing well is or is playing well also, but I would take Michigan State on the spread. Um, this is one of the ones I think I've been most sure about all year. Now I did go four and one last week, so the one that burned me was the TCU Kansas spread. So I said that TCU was going to beat the spread. The spread was TCU by 45. They ended up winning by, I want to say, 6. So um, definitely not anything I saw coming. But, you know, it was a rough week for TCU. Uh, Boykin got hurt. Doxon was out. And, you know, it might be more of the same this week for TCU. Who knows? Anyway, uh, I would take Michigan State, Ohio, or I would take Michigan State on the spread in that game. So, next one is another Kansas line, and that's West Virginia and Kansas. Now, West Virginia is coming into this game with a very, in a very different situation than Kansas is. So, West Virginia has won two in a row against two good teams. I believe they beat, yeah, they beat Texas last week and then Texas Tech the week before. Now, I know teams have, some teams have struggled at Kansas. Really outside, actually outside of Texas Tech, I can't think of anyone. But I do think that West Virginia is on a roll. I think that they're going to easily beat the spread, which is 28. I get it is at Kansas, and West Virginia plays a lot better in Morgantown. But they also have not been a terrible team on the road this year. So I do think that they're going to beat the spread. Um, I, think this is, I think this is a good one to take. I think Kansas is going to start getting beat by a lot again. All right, next one is Georgia Southern and Georgia. So if you have looked back at Georgia Southern's games this year, when they, whenever they have played a good team, um, you know, along the lines of even an App State, um, you know, they started the year against, I want to say, they lost 44 nothing. I can't put my finger on it, but yes, uh, they did not start off the year well, they just got dismantled, it was a good team. Anyway, um, they have been pretty good since then, and I just think that... Georgia's, Georgia's just not playing well right now, honestly. They did beat Auburn last week, but, you know, that wasn't... I feel like that was a game that should have... Okay, let's see here. Sorry, one second. This thing's killing me. All right, West Virginia. All right, so they lost 44 nothing to West Virginia, but that was against the West Virginia team with Carl Joseph, and that is a very different West Virginia team than they have now. So I do think that Georgia Southern is a team that's playing a lot better. Um, you know, they've won... Outside of the loss to App State, they've won seven. I mean, they won seven in a row, so seven in the last eight. But I do think that they're going to be able to beat the spread this week, which is 13 and a half. Georgia has not shown the ability to blow anyone out this year since Nick Chubb went down. And they've lost a lot of games that they shouldn't have. And I think, well, not a lot, I think one or two. But um, nevertheless, I do think Georgia Southern's going to beat the spread. I think with the way this game's going to go, Grayson Lambert has not been playing well at all of late. They can't really figure out their quarterback situation. Bryce Ramsey wasn't the answer. Um, I want to say Fatone Bauda? Something like that. Uh, whatever the third string quarterback is, his, did not play well either. So, um, George is obviously still right, relying on the running game with Keith Marshall and Sonny Michelle, but. Uh, Georgia Southern is also a very run-heavy team, so I can't see this game getting too far out of hand for either side because both teams are still solid running teams. And both teams at least have decent defenses. Granted, it's hard to tell with Georgia Southern's strength of schedule. But nonetheless, I would take Georgia Southern to be spread, even though I think Georgia is going to win the game. All right, so next one is probably the one I am most confident in this week, out maybe outside of the Michigan State, Ohio State one, and that is TCU against OU, and the line is OU by 11. Now, I get it, TCU's playing like a desperate team. Outside of that, they don't have Doxon this weekend. Boykin's banged up, and OU's playing 
like their pants were on fire. They've just been playing like they've been playing like maybe the best team in the country ever since they lost to Texas. And this game is at home for OU, and you know, really the only thing I can think that would get OU in this one is looking forward to the Bedlam game, and I don't think that's going to get them at all. I think they've learned their lesson against, uh, you know, from what happened against Texas, and I definitely don't think they're going to let that happen again. Um, like I said, they just, I mean, they were able to beat Baylor by 10 points last week, and I think TCU doesn't even come close to measuring up to Baylor anymore. And like I said, TCU is, like I've been saying all year, TCU is nowhere close to the same team on the road. They are on home. And this isn't even the same team on offense anymore. It's a banged up team. Uh, yeah, there's yeah they got a lot of guys back on defense, but even the defense, it did play solid last week, but that was against Kansas. Defense has been getting lit up for most of the season, and I think that's going to continue against OU, one of the most red hot offenses in the country. So I would easily take OU minus eleven in this one. All right, so my final one is an over under, and that is the LSU Ole Miss game. I think this game's going to be a mess offensively. LSU just can't put up points anymore for some reason. and Well, for some reason, Brandon Harris has been relied too heavily upon and Leonard Fournette's been shut down. So that amounts to LSU scoring, or scoring between 14 and 16 points a game. Defense has not been stepping up very much either. I mean, you can't really blame it on them, but still, they haven't been playing great. Um, Ole Miss, I could see them putting up some points this week. I just don't see 56.5 being beat here. I think maybe... Uh, 30 to 14 game is realistic at like the highest point but even that that is 44 points that does not beat the over under and i think this over under is entirely too high and i think if you're looking for one over under to take on it should be on this game so yes that is the only over under i've said this year besides the oklahoma state texas tech which was i think it was like 73 and a half and um it the total amount of points scored ended up being some i think it was 123 so um yeah Sometimes there's a gem you can find in the over-unders, and I think that's the one for this week. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, those are my best picks against the spread and one against the over-unders. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, yeah.